Hey, this is Chris Mitchell with CBN News, and uh, I am in a park uh, just across the valley from the old city of Jerusalem. And I want to just point out what you can see here now. You can see the walls of the old city, and you can make out the Jaffa Gate over there. And uh, so it's an amazing view over here. And there's a reason, special reason, why I'm here and uh, why what just happened here, actually just a few minutes ago, a story we'll be probably doing on uh, CBN News. Uh, concerning the gift by U.S. Evangelical Christians uh, to the city of Jerusalem. And we're going to talk to Rabbi Pesach Wolaki, who's uh, really been instrumental in making this happen. So, uh, Rabbi, great to see you. I won't uh, do that. We'll do you. this. Good uh, to see you. You can take that. I'm going to cover my face now. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay, Strange you'll times. probably put it here. We'll stay socially distant, but okay. we want to make sure. Tell us what this is. This literally just was in a few minutes ago. Right. Uh, about half an hour ago, we finished the work of putting the Lion of Judah, this wonderful bronze uh, sculpture, into the, into the ground here in the city of Jerusalem. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the sculpture. The artist is, uh, is an artist by the name of Max Greiner. He's from Kerrville, Texas, a wonderful man of God, a Christian who lives in Texas and has made some wonderful prominent sculptures and he's a great friend of Israel. And this project began years ago where he and, and a number of prominent Christian leaders in the United States of America wanted to gift the people of Israel and the city of Jerusalem with a symbol of the strength of the people of Israel, with a symbol of Jerusalem, with the Lion of Judah. Uh, and uh, so this has been many years in the making. This lion actually arrived in Israel about two years ago it was officially accepted by the president of the state of Israel and by the Knesset and by the city of Jerusalem. But it took a while for you know bureaucracy and getting through the, the decisions about, about uh, where it should go exactly. I got involved in this, uh, I think in la last August, I was introduced to Max and things weren't moving. And I offered to uh, get involved and, and talk to the people that I know in the city and, uh, and kind of work as a go-between. Uh, to get this project done. So uh, since August, um, I, uh, we've been working on this. Again, working with the city of Jerusalem, picking the right location. So where we are is in Bloomfield Park, mm -hmm. right, which is, um, we're right near the King David Hotel. People have been to Israel before. If you know where the King David Hotel is, right near the King David Hotel, there's a big park. And uh, this park overlooks, as you see, the walls of the old city. There's a neighborhood between here and the walls of the old city which is actually the first neighborhood in Jerusalem's history that was outside the old city walls. Uh, so this is really the border of old Jerusalem and new Jerusalem. Uh, and it's really the, the perfect place for this lion because the lion really represents, you know, the rise and strength of the people of Israel. And that's biblical. That's right there in the Bible. Yeah, yeah. You were saying you were quoting me a scripture not too long ago. What's what's that scripture, and why do you it, think it's, it's so appropriate it's, today? It, it's a scripture from the Book of Numbers. You know, in the Book of Numbers, the the wicked seer or prophet or whatever you call him, sorcerer Bilam, or Balaam as he's sometimes pronounced, uh, he he was he wanted to curse the people of Israel, um, and and God of course didn't let him, and God forced his mouth really, and, uh, to bless the people of Israel instead. And some of those blessings are some of the loftiest blessings we've ever received. And, and one of those blessings reads as follows. Hold on, here we are. There is no divination against Jacob, no evil omens against Israel. It will now be said of Jacob and of Israel, see what God has done. And we all see what God has done here, the miraculous rise of the people of Israel and rebuilding of our land. The verse goes on. See what God has done, says the verse. The people rise like a lioness. They rouse themselves like a lion. So the lion is really biblically the representation of the majesty of the people of Israel, of the strength of the people of Israel. And... Um, I just want to share one other detail. Can we come around and look yeah, at the yeah, face of the lion? Yeah, I was going to ask you about that just as well. Yeah. So this is the face of the lion. Really, just take it in. It's really gorgeous. And when I was in Texas a few months ago, I was speaking to Max about the lion. And uh, he has a replica of it there. And I was looking at the face, and I was so struck by the, by the artistry and the expression on the face. 
and I asked Max about it, and he said to me that he wanted to convey strength, but at the same time, a, a, a caring and a softness, meaning strength without intimidation, strength without instilling fear. And that's a, that's a very difficult balance. If you think about it, if you wanted to draw a face that was conveying strength and power, but you didn't want it to be intimidating, that really takes real artistry and it really takes a real inspired soul to do that. And Max managed that. And here you have the Lion of Judah really looking very strong and very majestic, but at the, at the same time, very sensitive, very loving. And I, and I thought as I was driving away from Max, uh, from my meeting with Max and my time with him, I was thinking about that combination, that balance that he struck in the face and how representative it really is of the people of Israel and what we strive for and what I believe we've accomplished. And the nation of Israel today is a powerful nation. Everyone knows that economically, militarily, politically. Israel is, is more powerful than we've, than we've been in thousands of years. And at the same time, there's a care and compassion that we're known for. There is a love for humanity that we're known for. Israel is a place of great compassion and love. At the same time, and, with, and it's no contradiction, at the same time as, as, we, as we are strong and we are courageous and we have risen like a lion. So this, this is really uh, a gift that means so much. Um, and the fact that that, all of everything that I've said has come about as an expression of love and friendship from the Christian community in their love and friendship for the people of Israel. So much of our strength today, militarily, politically, uh, comes from that friendship, the strength of that friendship with Christian Zionism, which has become a major force uh, of good in this country. Everyone in Israel today is aware of the wonderful contributions mm. that Christian supporters of Israel uh, have made uh, to our society, to our economy, to our security. Uh, we are increasingly you know, brothers fighting side by side, really standing shoulder to shoulder to glorify the name of God. And this line really represents that relationship. Mm. Wow, well, well put. I was going to ask you about that. About the, And by the way, I'm on camera right now. Our good cameraman, Jonathan Goff, is running the camera. So I'm in front of the camera right now. So uh, it's nice to do this. So so you see this as a symbol of that that relationship between evangelical Christians uh, and the Jewish state, the Jewish yeah, people? Yeah, I mean, that's what it is. I mean, this is a gift. From, from many prominent evangelical leaders, a lot of the people behind the Jerusalem Prayer Breakfast, which has become an institution in this country where, where so many Christian leaders come to Jerusalem to pray for Israel, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And a lot of, a, a lot of those voices and, and the great rise in, in, in numbers of, of Christian support for Israel, a lot of the leaders of that, of that movement within Christianity are the same people who have, who have made this gift possible. So what it represents for us in that love, in that relationship, in that, in that working together, and this is permanent. You know, someone walking by now, there was someone who was out for a morning jog and, and, he, was, and he was coming by and he noticed it and he, he lives in Jerusalem, he's never seen it before, and he was asking about it. And, and he was talking about how beautiful it is, and, 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 and look at this. And he said, the first thing he said was, is this temporary or is it permanent? And I said, oh yeah, it's permanent. You don't have something that weighs more than a ton that'd be temporary. And, and that's significant. You know, I, I sometimes go to, you know, to, you know, to Europe on vacation with my wife. You know, we'll go to, I've been to different cities, go to London, or you go to Paris, you go to different cities around the world. And you see pieces of public art, sculptures that have been, Sometimes they've been there for hundreds of years, and they're just permanent fixtures. They're part of the landscape of the city. And those are just in, in, in cities in Europe. This is Jerusalem. This is God's capital city. And the fact that we have merited to be a part of and to witness the installing of a permanent fixture in the landscape of the city of Jerusalem, which is an expression of the love and friendship between Christians and Jews at this time of, of, our, of, of, of the growth and the ingathering of the people of Israel to our land, to have a symbol of that, of that friendship, of that partnership, to me, it really speaks volumes about where we've come in our history and, and, and where this relationship is and where it's going. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, Rabbi Wolokik, uh, a, few, a few minutes ago, 45 minutes ago, there was a number of people here, maybe 15 or 20 people, now there's just a few. But what do you see for the future uh, of the Lion of Judah? What do you see uh, people coming by and doing? Well, I, you know, one of the things that, that, um, that Max talked about when we, when we were talking about the ideal location for it was that he wanted it to be somewhere where children could play on it. 
you know, this is a sturdy sculpture. We don't have to worry about it, you know. It's not like a piece of art that you can't go up and touch. It's made to be played on. I could see children riding on its back. But it's also a place where people could come to appreciate the relationship between Jews and Christians. There is going to be a plaque here which is going to say what it is. That hasn't been made yet. But someone who comes by in the future won't have to ask a question if they get lucky enough to find one of us standing here. There will yeah. be a plaque that will, that will express what this is about and the friendship that this, that this lion represents. So what, what I see happening in the future is people coming by, like I said, children playing on it, people appreciating it for what it is, taking pictures with the old city in the background. We also chose a location that has a big grassy area here. If, if you could just turn around for a second, take a look, you'll see that there's an area here where in the future when uh, you know Christian tour groups <laughs> will come to Israel or Jewish groups will come by, they'll be able to gather here to pray, gather here to speak about the significance of this. Um, there was supposed to be a, a, a large dedication ceremony next month uh, around the Jerusalem prayer breakfast, which, which again, tragically because of Corona, has been postponed. We don't know when that's going to be. God willing, all this will clear up and it'll get planned again. So next time there is a gathering like that in Jerusalem, hopefully we will have that dedication ceremony. But we specifically chose a location with an area in front of it where people could gather uh, and, mm -hmm. and, and gaze upon the lion and the city of Jerusalem in the background. Uh, so that was really the choice of location. And, 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 and so, so the choice of location was really with a vision to answering your question of where do we see this? Mm -hmm. How do we see it being used, so to speak? Um, but, you, you know, what's amazing to me, uh, something to really, you know, let's sink in, is that this is permanent. This is part of the landscape of the city of yeah. Jerusalem. This is part of Jerusalem now and forever. Um, tour guides bringing their groups through 100 years from now are going to bring them to the Lion of Judah and use it as a way of talking about the historic relationship between Jews and Christians at the critical time in Israel's history that we're living through. Yeah. Because that's really what this represents. And it's just so meaningful. As, as a rabbi, uh, as, as an Orthodox Jewish rabbi who, who spends my life working in the area of building bridges between Jews and Christians, to be part of this, this is really, it represents everything that I work for, which is increasing that friendship, increasing that bond, <coughs> strengthening that bond of friendship between the Jewish and Christian communities. This lion represents my work. Uh, in, in, in no great, I can't think of anything that, re that represents it more. So I was so honored when I met Max and he talked about the problems he was having. I was saying, okay, this wasn't a chance meeting. <laughs> if I was introduced to Max and Max is having this issue where he, he, he wants to get this project moving forward, you know, he asked me to help. There's no way I'm saying no to that. That would be like saying no to God. I can't do that. And, uh, and it was a no-brainer to get involved. It's been a long journey. There was, you know, as you can imagine with bureaucracies, there was always things that needed to be taken care of mm -hmm. and dealing with the city officials yeah. and um, but uh, you know thank God you know this is the this is the day the Lord has made we got it done and and here's the lion uh, so next time you come to Jerusalem everyone watching you're gonna come to the Bloomfield Park <laughs> and it's the, you know when your tour group is is staying in a hotel in Jerusalem for the night and you're wondering what to do with your evening you'll come by here and you'll and you'll and you'll you'll take pictures with the lion you can pray in front of it you can you know say special you know, special thanks to God for the relationship between Jews and Christians that's, that's represented here. I mean, this is really a, it's really a historic event. Yeah, yeah. Well, Rabbi, I would say kol kavod, which in Hebrew means with great respect, uh, well done. Thank you, uh, thank you very actually, much, it's exciting. I know what uh, bureaucracy can be like, it's uh, <laughs> not easy, uh, but you've uh, persevered. Along with help from Floor, uh, from Floor Hassan Nahum, Hassan, who was the deputy, was the deputy mayor. mayor, we interviewed her, and uh, we're, we'll be doing a story on CBN News uh, about the installation, about the whole story behind it as well. And uh, we've had Rabbi on as well as the Deputy Mayor Floor, Hassan Nahum, who really, uh, you both played pivotal roles. Oh, yeah. In, uh, it, was it was a team effort. It was a team effort. The two of us worked together. F from when I got involved, she was really grateful. As soon as I got involved, she wrote to me, she sent me a WhatsApp message. She said, Thank you so much for getting involved. Now I've got a partner. You know, because we, you know, I was, because I was really working as a representative of, of the donors and, and was able to kind of push things from that direction. And, uh, and she had to kind of play a little politics in the city government. So the two of us really yeah. worked together to get this done. And you know, I, we, we interviewed uh, Amos, who was uh, the head of the art in the city. Yeah, he's uh, city. the director of the, of the public art. Right, the we'll have him in our story as well. 
He made a, a, a striking comment, I thought. He said, this is one of the most beautiful pieces of art in the whole city. Yeah, he said, there's 172 uh, pieces of art in the city. And yeah. he said, this stands out because it represents Jerusalem in a way that no other piece of art does. People yeah. donate art to the city of Jerusalem. It's very nice art, but it has nothing to do with Jerusalem, per se. This is the symbol of Jerusalem. If you look at the coat of arms, the symbol of the city of Jerusalem on the letterhead of the city of Jerusalem or anything official from the city of Jerusalem, the coat of arms is a lion. So the lion really <coughs> is symbolic of Jerusalem. And, uh, and again, so there's, no, there's nothing more appropriate to be installed permanently right. than this beautiful, beautiful yeah. work. Anything else on your heart you wanted to share? Uh, no, I mean, this is, uh, I'm just, I'm elated. I'm excited. I've never been a part of something like this, installing a permanent piece of public art and having a hand in it. And, uh, and I'm just grateful. I'm grateful that I'll be able to come back and visit it and, and see it and, and remember what it represents. And, uh, and I'm grateful that, you know, that God has, has allowed me, and I think we should all be grateful, to live in such a time as this. Such a time as this, when the people of Israel, after thousands of years, have been reconstituted in our land, exactly as the biblical prophecies say. And we all have to ask ourselves, why did I merit? Why did God choose me to live in the time period when so much of the biblical story is coming to a head and so much of the biblical prophecies are coming to, are coming to fruition when our ancestors just dreamed to see times like this uh, and, uh, and and we somehow merit and and maybe maybe each and every one of us can say well if god chose me to live at this time what does that demand of me how should i be responding to that maybe there's some contribution we could make so come visit israel if you haven't as soon as this whole corona thing is over please come and visit israel if you haven't if you can't physically come visit Israel in the near future. Uh, you know, continue to support Israel, pray for us, and, and be involved in any way that you can, because this relationship ultimately is what it's all about. It's all about serving the Lord, as Zephaniah said, shoulder to shoulder. Wow, wow. well put, uh, Rabbi. And uh, pray for the peace of Jerusalem as well, as uh, King David said, and uh, Psalm 122. And also uh, watch for this story on cbnnews.com. Uh, the CBN News Channel, and uh, the 700 Club. So this is uh, Chris Mitchell with Rabbi Wolicki and uh, for uh, Jerusalem Dateline Facebook. And so uh, keep, uh, keep sharing us on Facebook, and see you next time. Bye-bye. Right, thank you. Okay, now do you want me to send...